Videography that feels like it's out of a movie has always been a dream of mine. When you see a film or great YouTube video, you might start to wonder if there is a secret setting they use to make their videos look so crisp. But what if I told you that there was an easy way to achieve the same? I always thought there was a secret. Until I sat down and learned how to set the right export settings for crisp looking videos myself. Even when uploading to YouTube or Instagram. So let me show you exactly how that's done today. And let's master the art of video exporting using DaVinci Resolve's delivery tab. Before we get into the theory and tutorial of today's video, I quickly want to talk about how I create these videos, as many of you asked. Therefore, I wanted to suggest using Storyblocks if you're a videographer or storyteller yourself. Let's say you tell stories for your brand, whether it's through podcasts, educational videos or entertainment, and you want to access stock footage, then Storyblocks is the perfect place to go. When it comes to storytelling visually, it's extremely important to showcase what you're talking about. And through animation, stock footage, video templates, motion backgrounds and sound effects, you can easily do so. So embrace the freedom of an unlimited library by going to the link in the description. When it comes to exporting your videos, believe me when I say that this knowledge will revolutionize the way you export and deliver your videos. As filmmakers, our ultimate goal is to create content that captivates, evokes emotions and tells a powerful story. To achieve this, we invest time, passion and energy in every step of the process, from pre-production to post-production. And the key component of the post-production phase is exporting your video, ensuring that your hard work and creativity are preserved and showcased in the best possible quality. But let's face it, we've all experienced that gut-wrenching moment when we finish editing a project only to realize that the exported video has lost its original charm. Perhaps the colors are off, the resolution isn't sharp or there is a loss of detail. This is where DaVinci Resolve Delivery tab comes in to save the day. I will teach you how to navigate and optimize your settings to achieve a flawless and professional look in your exported videos. From mastering codecs and formats to understanding bit rates and frame rates. I will guide you through every step along the way. And to make your work even easier, remember that you can enhance your videos with our professionally crafted LUTs available on our website. These LUTs will help you achieve stunning looks and speed up your workflow so you can focus on creativity. As you can see on the timeline, we have two clips. I applied my LUTs to them at the very end of my note tree and made some basic corrections. On the left side, we have the export settings. In the center, you see the viewer. On the right side, we have the render queue window. And at the bottom, we have the timeline of our project. Let's go in order. On the left side of the export settings and at the top, we have the presets that we've prepared. Let's use the example of the H264 master preset to break down all the functions of the export settings. So here we set the name of the file. And here the path where our file will be rendered. Next, we have two options for how we can render our project. The first option is single clip. Respectively, our entire video will be recorded into one file. The second option, individual clips, allows us to record each file individually. Next, here we have the settings specifically for video. Here are the settings for audio and here are the file settings. So in the video tab, we set the format and then select the codec. The resolution of the output file is set here. In this case, we have 4K because I have a project set for 4K. If I change it to Full HD, respectively, everything will be reset to Full HD. The settings quality, encoding profile, entropy mode and keyframes stay as they are set to the best quality settings by default and work rate on any material. So next we go to advanced settings. Here we have another opportunity to set color space tag and gamma tag respectively. If you work on Mac, leave it the same as project. But make sure that in the color management of your project, you have Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 for timeline color space and Rec 709A for output color space. Next, we have data burn-in. In this case, you can see that I have here a time code that will burn into the video itself. Now it is same as project. And after export, this time code will be burned into the video itself. If you want to switch it off, just set it to none and this time code will be removed from the video and after export. Let me show you where you can turn on the time code. Go to the workspace menu, select data burn-in, and here we can enable or disable all kinds of data for the video respectively. In this case, I have record time code enabled. Use optimized media as enabled if your project has optimized media and you need to accelerate your rendering. Next is the same use proxy media. 
If you have a proxy, respectively, your sources will be replaced by proxy files. Then a similar function, use render cached images. If you have a cached project, it will accelerate the rendering of your video. Next, we have force sizing to highest quality. If your project uses transform animation or size, this checkbox allows you to do all these resizing in the best quality. Force the Bayer to the highest quality forces DaVinci to do the Bayering at its best quality. These last two settings should always be enabled when exporting video. Next, enable flat pass. In case you want to render the same video without color correction, you can select always on and your video will be exported without color correction. Disabling sizing and blanking output is enabled in the case when you also have manipulated side views, transformation, etc. in the project and you do not need to transfer it to the final master respectively. Turn it on and all these settings will be disabled. Turn this on if you have subtitles in your project, in this case the subtitles in the subtitle track. You have the ability to put those subtitles as a separate file or embed them inside the video. And that way you will have the ability to turn those subtitles on or off in the players. And the third point is burn into video. Roughly speaking, you can burn those subtitles into the video itself without turning them off. So we are basically done with the video and then we have the audio tab. Here I never touch these settings. The only thing is, if you do need to read audio, you can always disable it here. Next we got file. Here we now have selected custom name. So we can set your custom name for this file or use the name of the timeline itself. This is very convenient when you have a project with several different timelines and not to manually enter the name of the video files every time. You can select this option and the name will automatically change when you change each timeline. Next, if you don't have a powerful computer or you have a very heavy project and when exporting you meet any difficulties in rendering, respectively, you can select in the menu render speed number of frames that will be rendered in one second. Suppose we choose 5 frames and when exporting DaVinci will render a video file at a rate of 5 frames per second and accordingly may drop some load from your computer. So next, another little feature on how to load off your computer. In the central window on the right side, we have three points. Select updates during renders and always put on the value off. Accordingly, when exporting, our video will not be played in the viewer. Another small note about the resolution of the output file in this case, it is now in full HD. If I want to render it in 4K, DaVinci starts complaining that the output file resolution is different from our timeline. To render it without loss of quality in 4K, we need to set the timeline in 4K in the project setup itself. And then this problem will disappear. Next preset for YouTube is a very useful preset in case you need to quickly calculate a preview of your project and send it to your client. Accordingly, after exporting, DaVinci automatically uploads it to your YouTube channel and accordingly after exporting, you will only need to send the link to your client. This is only possible if you have a social network account linked to your DaVinci Resolve. Next is a similar preset for Vimeo, Dropbox and TikTok. We are interested in the Premiere XML preset. It's a preset for a round trip with the editor. In other words, when the project goes from the editor to the colorist and then color correction goes back to the editor. In this preset, the project is calculated individually and then we have an interesting item called render as source resolution. If you enable it, DaVinci will render every file in its resolution bypassing the timeline settings. Let's assume you have a 6K file, a 4K file and say a full HD file. After exporting, each of these files will be in a different resolution. And in the tab file, here we can see that each file will have its source name. The checkbox use unique file names is on and prefix is selected. That is, each file will have its unique file name and the prefix will be added to the name of the track on which it is located. And not to go back every time and not to do all these manipulations, we can save it in your preset. This is done here. Click on three points, then we save it as a new preset. Let's name it test. Here we will see our preset. Also in DaVinci, there is a quick export mode. It is available in the tab Cut, Edit and Color. Then click on the file and select Quick Export. Here we have a window with presets that we can use. Selecting a particular preset, click on Export, then choose a path and export. Next, here we have the timeline itself. In the timeline, we cannot make any changes. That is, we cannot re-edit it here. Disable audio or video tracks. This is done in order not to accidentally mess up your project. Note that the area for rendering is now colored orange. This tells us that we now have selected individual clips mode. In this mode, we have no possibility to choose a certain segment and to calculate it only. We only have the option to read a single file or the whole timeline. If we choose single clip, our area is colored in gray. And here we have an opportunity to select a specific area for rendering and output it separately. Also, here's another very useful trick with the selection of specific clips. Suppose we need to render just this file. You can right click on it, select render this clip and automatically this area will be selected. Next we have render queue. Here you can see that I have three files in the queue. 
This is where we can immediately see what preset is used to render each file. In this case, it's ProRes. The second is Premiere XML, and the third is YouTube. If you want to see more information on the settings of each renderer, here we can press the three dots and click Show Job Details. Here, accordingly, we have information on resolution, codec, frame count, and so on. In the case of Premiere XML, here we have everything in source source. A cool feature of the queue is that we can see the queue from other projects. In this case, I have a node tree from another project on the node tree here. And before finishing off this video, I want to share the export settings that I use for rendering out my YouTube videos. I always use QuickTime ProRes 422HQ. And that's it for this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.